Hello everybody, welcome to my class. Uh, today uh, I will mainly discuss about uh, cube roots of unity as well as we will see that how to uh, find the square root of complex numbers uh, with uh, some of the related uh, problem examples. Okay, so this is the third part of uh, the complex number class. So before I proceed on to this uh, section, uh, in the last uh, class I had forgotten to mention about the division of the complex number. So let's first see that uh, how we uh, see the division of the complex numbers. So for example, uh, you are given that uh, let, you can say let g1 equals to any complex number you can say like uh, r1 cos theta1 plus i sin theta1 and this also you can write as r1 e to the power i theta1 in the Euler's form alright this is i and similarly you can write g2 equals to r2 cos theta2 plus i sin theta2 and in the Euler's form you can write this as r2 e to the power i theta2 now we are interested to divide these complex numbers then you can see here is that uh, g1 over g2 equals to you can write r1 cos theta1 plus i sin theta1 over r2 cos theta2 plus i sin theta2 and this is also possible to write uh, or take the complex number in Cartesian form that I think I have done in my previous classes so here let's see in the form of uh, polar form alright so in this case good idea is that if you go through this you have to rationalize the denominator but it will be a lengthy process so what you can do you know that r1 cos theta1 so cos theta1 plus i theta1 is in fact this is the Euler number so here you can write uh, r1 and in this uh, place this is e to the power i theta1 and then over r2 e to the power in the denominator we have i theta2 so uh, after that we have take r1 and r2 outside of this uh, sort of things and so e to the power this is i theta1 and when you divide uh, two numbers in algebra then what happens the powers and powers get subtracted so here it is in the numerator it is i theta1 in the denominator it is i theta2 so you can write here it is i theta minus i theta 2 and after that this is r1 and r2 and you take out i common then it is theta 1 minus theta 2 all right so here in this case you can see that there is only theta 1 so in that case we have uh, cos theta 1 plus i theta 1 and similarly in the second complex number we have in place of i theta 2 it is cos theta 2 plus i sin theta 2 so here in this case in place of theta we have theta 1 minus theta 2 and both are the angles therefore their difference is also a also an angle so if you use the same sort of uh, thing over from here then it is r1 over r2 and then uh, inside the bracket this is cos in place of theta now it is theta 1 minus theta 2 and then plus i sin theta 1 minus theta 2 and this way we can uh, divide two complex number which are in polar forms so let's now uh, proceed further you can uh, you know that in a quadratic equation you can say in a quadratic equation 
ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. Okay. So, uh, you have already seen that while studying functions and graph, especially in the uh, quadratic equations. So, it is, uh, you, you have seen that it is b square minus 4ac is called discriminant of the quadratic equation when you check through this formula. This is minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac, alright, 4ac over this is 2a. So, you can see inside the root there is b square minus 4ac this is called the discriminant of the quadratic equation that means uh, it will distinguish uh, that whether the root is real or no real or whether there are two roots or only one root for this quadratic equation all right so therefore this is called the discriminant and you know that if this sort of thing you see that this is greater equals to 0 not greater equals to 0, we call greater than 0, that means we talk about the positive value of b square minus 4ac, then you can say that there are two roots of, of this quadratic equation. Roots means there are two values we are talking of, root of that quadratic equation you can say this as 1 all right and also uh, you have seen that if b square minus 4ac equals to 0 that means there is only one root of this quadratic equation all right and uh, in the third case you see that if you say if b square minus 4ac is less than 0 that means this is negative then you can say that then there is no real root or you can say roots okay uh, for this quadratic equation so we talk about there are two roots that means we are we are talking of the two real roots all right there is only one root that means we are talking of one real root b square minus 4 is less than 0 means that is negative then we say that there or we see that there, there is no real root what does it mean that there is root but there is no real root so at this time i will focus mainly on this last condition where uh, b square minus 4 ac is negative now let's take an example uh, where we want to solve uh, a, uh, an equation we have z square plus z plus 1 equals to 0 so at this time i am taking the quadratic equation and then see that what will be the solution for this and you know that here if you treat this as x for example then your z value will be given by minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac by 2a in this case so uh, if you compare this these values from the given equation so in place of b you can see this is 1 so it is minus and this is 1 plus minus under root of b square means it is 1 square minus 4 in place of a which is coefficient of z square that is also again 1 and c is again 1 and 2 times of what you saw here is that 2 times of 1 and uh, your value after that is minus 1 plus minus this is you can see here that 1 square is 1 minus 4 is this is minus 3 and divided by 2 and in fact this is minus 1 plus minus under root 3 means you if you check out this root 3 in the real sense and then you will have minus 1 over 2 and so you can see that here this is half uh, there are two things so you can write half plus minus of root 3i by 2 because since i equals to you know that this is under root of minus 1 and here you can see that the roots are 
not the real roots the roots are the complex roots that means we have two complex roots here so that is 1 by 2 minus 1 by 2 minus under root 3 by 2i and then another is minus 1 by 2 and then uh, in between there is a plus sign and then, then this is root 3 by 2i okay root 3 by 2i so what did you observe that this is not possible that every time you will see that the roots or the values that you obtain through uh, an equation so here i will say this equality equation uh, are always real they are not always real in fact and in between let me tell you that i took a lot of time to calculate uh, this sort of root by using this sort of method okay by using this formula but in your exam you have little time and this is not the part of our uh, part of uh, making clear the steps and at the same time you are allowed to use the calculator so i will suggest you to use calculator in this sort of uh, finding the roots or any sort of calculation like this so here i can see it is you go to mode somewhere is mode is here yes this is mode and in the mode you can see that I, I don't know whether or not it is visible on the screen but uh, you should be used to of uh, this sort of thing so I can see in number 5 there is equation and I require the quality equation for example so it is in number 3 yes you just put value the coefficient of g square is 1 so this is 1 enter that means equal and then another coefficient is also 1 so it is 1 enter and then last coefficient is fortunately also this is 1 so again enter 1 and equal now yes if you put one time equal then you will have one value of x and you can see that this is half yeah same as 1 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 i and if you put the equal another time then you will see that yes you will get another value like this so this is good idea to go through the calculator instead of wasting time in this sort of making the uh, manual calculations ourselves and uh, another feature what you can note or you start to note that whenever you find the roots of the quality equation or of any equation then the complex roots you will see that they are always in pair okay you will not find the single complex uh, root okay or the values and they are not only in pair so each pair you will see that they are conjugate to each other for example if this is minus then another is plus in between the real and imaginary part all right so start to note it uh, note it down from now so let's now consider uh, a quadratic equation like this all right so here you can see that the coefficient of g g squared is 2 so i enter 2 equal then 3 equal then 1 equal and my values are i got uh, one value as one value of z as minus 1 by 2 and another value i got is minus 1 all right so here in this case we can see that uh, none of the value of g is uh, real, um, complex or imaginary you know therefore we can say that here uh, g is not complex number so this is not necessary that every time you will get the complex number or every time you will get the real numbers you can have either or both so let me take one more example so it is Another example, if I take it is 3g square and then plus 4z and then plus 17 and if you go to the calculator and if you work similarly, you will see the values of g as 1 value is minus 2 by 3 plus under root of 47 over 3i and another rate, uh, root you will get that minus 2 by 3 minus it is 47 by 3 i so uh, they look like the same only the difference is that 
here it is plus in between real and imaginary part and but here it is minus so you can say that if one is z then another root as g star which is called the conjugate of the complex number all right so and also you have you again saw that this complex answers are in pair okay so it is this is not possible that you can take any other example and check if there is complex root then you will see that there must be another also complex root and in each pair they are conjugate to each other let's now talk about cube root of unity so here in this case we have g cube equals to 1 then what are the values of g so in this case this is g cube in another step if you transpose this to the left it is going to be minus 1 equals to 0 and then after that you use the formula a q minus b q that means it is a minus b so i am write, writing g minus 1 in place of b there is 1 a minus b then a square plus a b means g times 1 is g plus b square means 1 that means 1 square is 1 equals to 0 and this means either g minus 1 equals to 0 or g square plus g plus 1 equals to 0 or you can say uh, both are 0 in general okay so from this we have seen that g equals to if you transpose this towards right it's going to be 1 and this is real root okay so we found uh, 1 as 1 real root for this cubic equation that means the cube root of 1 why it is called the cube root of 1 is that if this is g cube equal to 1 that means g equals to 1 to the power 1 by 3 so in real sense it seems that there is only one root which is 1 so whatever the power of 1 that is 1 but in the complex world there can be another story so here now let's take from and here in this case if you see here is that g square plus g plus 1 equals to 0 and if you go to the calculator or otherwise you'll see that one value of g is minus 1 by 2 plus root 3 by 2 i then definitely another root you'll see in your calculator that this is minus half minus which is the conjugate of the previous one so it is root 3 by 2 i so here also we saw that the complex roots are in pair and are conjugate to each other all right so therefore all possible uh, roots in general uh, for this uh, one okay so its cube roots are one then minus one by two minus under root 3 by 2 and then another is minus 1 by 2 plus under root 3 by 2 so these are the cube roots of 1 cube root of unity means that is the cube uh, these are the cube roots of 1 uh, let's now check few more okay guys uh, let's see that if you call one root as alpha and another value or root as beta then see that what happens alpha plus beta that means if you are adding uh, these two uh, complex roots but one is the real so we are talking of complex roots only so it's going to be minus 1 by 2 plus under root 3 by 2i and then we put plus and there this is plus minus 1 by 2 minus under root 3 by 2i so here you can see that it is minus half and minus half is going to be minus 1 and this is plus and minus term they got cancel out okay so when you added these two uh, complex roots your answer was real okay now let's multiply what happens alpha and beta uh, that means we are talking about multiplying or adding the cube roots of 1 and 
alpha times beta means it is again minus half plus under root 3 to i and inside the another root is minus half minus under root 3 by 2 i okay so you can see that these are in the form of a minus a plus b times a minus b and you know that a plus b times a minus b is a square minus b square so similar sort of work we can do over here is that in place of a there is minus half and in place of b there is uh, root 3 by 2 so it is minus 1 by 2 a square by using this formula this is minus root 3 by 2 root 3 by 2 i a square so definitely this is 1 by 4 and this is minus a square root of 3 is a square of uh, the root 3 is 3 and a square of 2 is 4 and then it is i a square so 1 by 4 plus we will have this is 3 by 4 because i a square equals to minus 1 you know and then this is 4 by 4 it is 1 so this is again the real number so when you add the roots uh, that means the cube roots uh, complex cube roots of un uh, unity that is 1 uh, that value is negative 1 and when you multiply them the value is positive 1 Okay guys, let's now talk about cube root of 8. What happens here? We talk about the cube root of unity in this way. We'll talk, we'll see also the cube root of 8, for example. So here, and uh, cube root of 8 means that, and if you go to the calculator in the real sense, you'll see that this is 2 again. Yes? And uh, so you write here 2 cube equals to 0 because I transfer this to the left, and 8 means 2 to the power 3. Now use the same formula we have g minus 2 and then this is g square plus ab means a square plus ab means this is 2g and plus b square means this is 4 equals to 0. So therefore g equals to 2 and if you find a square uh, the value of g for this equation you go to the calculator again. In the calculator, just put the coefficients of these values 1 equal to equal and then 4 equal, then one value is minus 1 plus under root 3i, and another value that I got is 1 minus that is minus 1 minus under root 3i. So, in this case, also you saw that the complex roots are in pair. And, uh, and also they are conjugate to each other now let's uh, now connect this to the so let me write these uh, two complex roots together so this is 1 plus minus you can see that this is under root of 3i and what if I multiply by 2 and also divide this by 2 for example so here you can see that after this step it's going to be minus no it's going to be two times of two times of minus one plus minus under root three i by two and then it is two times of you can see that it is minus one by two and plus minus under root 3 by 2 i and this sort of thing you have seen that 2 times of this is these are the cube roots of unity all right so what do you see in this case is that uh, as we are finding j cube roots of 8 for example that means uh, it is z cube minus 2 cube and we found that our answer was two times of the cube roots of unity and similarly if you are given any numbers like this for example z cube equals to 27 so definitely that is going to be z cube equals to 
3 to the power 3 and g cube minus 3 cube equals to 0 then you will find that 1 as the real root real cube root as 3 and another root as just like 3 times of cube roots of 1 all right that means another root will be 3 times of minus 1 by 2 plus minus root 3 by 2 i okay and similarly for example uh, if you are given uh, like in general you can say if it is like this if you uh, see like this z q minus a q then that is definitely going to be equal to for any real number a is that a times of the cube roots of 1 okay so this is very very important to note down based on your understanding first based on what we learned just now uh, now let's try to solve this sort of equation and you know that the cube root of z r 1 and then minus 1 by 2 plus minus under root 3 by 2 times of i that you already know now so here for a while so here you are given that you can suppose here z minus 5 as y for example okay so therefore what we have got is that this is y cube from here y cube equals to 8 means you can write here 2 cube all right and uh, just now we have seen that so therefore values of y will be now 2 and another values complex roots will be 2 times of the roots of that is the complex roots of okay these are the complex roots of unity that is 1 all right so your answer will be 2 times of uh, 2 times of you can just write it here is like this is negative half plus minus under root 3 by 2 okay under root 3 by 2 2 times of yes and there should be i so now replace back the term for y y in fact was g minus 5 so your 1 g minus 5 is 2 and it gives you z equals to 5 plus 2 as 7 so one of the answer is 7 and another value of z minus 5 in fact not only g so y is in fact minus 5, g minus 5 you multiply by this so it's going to be 2 times of half is 1 so it is negative 1 plus minus again you multiply by 2 so it is going to be root 3 i and finally we have z equals to if you transpose to the right side it's going to be 5 minus 1 plus minus under root 3 i and then 5 minus 1 so real real you can subtract or add together so it is going to be 4 and then plus minus under root 3 i so therefore the roots that means the values of z in this equation in this equation is going to be one real root and two complex values complex number values and here also you saw that these two complex here also you saw that these two complex numbers are in pair and they are so let's now go to the extension in the degree of the given polynomial uh, to solve it for example so you can you can see it is fz that is the this is function of z is z4 minus gq plus 20g square minus 16z plus 64 and this can be written as this way like okay then when you put all these sort of things equal to 0 then you have to solve the given equation like this so here you can start from this two middle term and last term is that you can see here it is z4 minus gq so uh, in the right side you just multiply it so it is z square and then this is z square plus b z plus power uh, powers in the descending form together and the constant terms together so here z4 is alone so you can write here z4 and then gq you can see there is only one term so you can write here b gq 
and g square you can see one and two terms so you take out g square common then it's going to be four plus a g square and then we have again only one term which contains g power one so it is a b g and then plus this is four a at last now what you can do is that comparing both sides here comparing both side means this is the left left hand side and this is the right hand side and you compare this so g4 g4 there is no uh, other constant like b and a but you, if you compare the the coefficient of g cube from both the sides is going to be in the left side you can see that this is minus one the coefficient is so you can write here minus one equals to here it is b and next g square is 20 and that's going to be here in the g square it is 4 plus a and this is g has constant coefficient 16 but here g has constant coefficient a b and finally can you see anything yes this is 64 as pure purely constant so it is here it is 4 a only yes this is that equals to 4 a now uh, we are interested to find the values of a and b in this case so b is already found over here that is minus 1 and a you can see that it's going to be 20 minus 4 is 16 and here also you can check if b is negative 1 yes you can see that then a is definitely going to be negative yes negative 1 then uh, negative time negative is positive so a is 16 and here also if you check whether or not we get yes if a is 16 so 16 times 4 is 64 so this is also true so therefore what you can write actually is that f z equals to 0 now we start it so in fact f z is z4 plus a value you have as 16 so you just put this value as 16 and then, then this is z squared plus b g so b value is it is negative 1 so you can put this sign as minus and then z plus 4 equal to 0 and uh, therefore you can see that g square equals to a uh, negative 16 and here by using the calculator uh, you will find that uh, another g value as this is 1 by 2 plus minus of uh, under root 15 by 2 i okay and here if you go further from this step then it is uh, z equals to here in this case you'll see that this is plus minus of uh, 4 okay so no this is not plus minus of 4 this is the plus minus of under root of 16 and that is going to be uh, plus minus uh, 4 under root minus 1 so this is plus minus 4 i so therefore while solving this sort of equation our values of z are all complex at this time so here it is z equals to you could see here that or just now we have done it is 4i so this is 4i and another values are 1 by 2 plus minus under root 15 by 2i so there are four values for z in this case and these are like this and here also you can see that the complex uh, complex roots in this case we have all the answers in the complex roots so here you can see that again the complex roots are in pair and they are conjugate to each other for example here in each pair this is plus and minus that makes uh, conjugate uh, value to each other here also plus 4i has conjugate value minus 4i and this is again in pair so these are the answers have a proper look if you like uh, you may pause here and see it nicely again and then okay guys for your better practice let's do this example so it is given that z equal to 3i is a root then solve this sort of equation and uh, couple of time just now we saw that if 
one is the complex one is the complex root then its conjugate is also the complex roots for the given equation or the given polynomial here so here in this case given that since g equals to 3i is a root then there is definitely going to be g equals to then there is definitely going to be g equal to its conjugate negative uh, 3i is also a root all right and uh, that means you can say that g minus 3i if you call this as 1 g minus 3i and g if you transpose this to the left it's going to be plus 3i both are factors of 1 why it is because this is the root so if you transpose this to, to the left so g minus 3i must be a factor of this in order to say g is 3i okay and now we saw that these two are the factors of the given equation or the given polynomial equation 1 so therefore this is also found that g minus 3i times g plus 3i both are okay both are that means the term if you multiply this is is also factor of factor of what one okay that means z minus 3i and z plus 3i if you multiply them it is a minus b a plus b form is going to be a square minus b square is means it is 3i square equals to g square and 3 times 3 is 9 and i square is negative uh, 1 because i square you'll see here that the negative 1 so negative times negative is positive so it is g square plus 9 okay is you can say is also a factor means again a factor you can say is also a factor of 1 that means this equation 1 as g square plus 9 is the factor of this equation then then this factor must divide the given equation exactly all right so therefore let's divide it and see what happens so it is g4 minus 2 got cancelled out you can see that we are remained with 5 g square and plus 45 now let's take by 5 so 5 times of g square is it is 5 g square and 5 times of 9 is it is 45 and again subtract it so there is no remainder so what we could write here is that therefore you can write here the same equation you can take as this is g4 minus 3gq plus 14g square minus 18g plus 45 equals to 0 can be written as okay this quotient time the divisor equals to this sort of polynomial so what you can write here that g square plus 9 times of g square minus 2g plus 5 equals to 0 that means as we have divided this polynomial by g square plus 9 and our answer was like this that means you have to check if you are interested so that means there must be when you multiply these two then your polynomial will be the same like this because we saw that this term is a factor of the given polynomial okay so what you will see in this case is that therefore you can say that g square plus 9 equal to 0 that means g square equals to negative 9 and once you take the square root and this is the square root of the negative number there must be g equals to g equals to plus minus of 3 times 3 is 9 so you will write 3 but there will be one term i you have to you can see it you can check it okay so one pair of answer is plus minus 
3i now because this product is 0 that means z square plus minus 2z plus 5 is also equal to 0 and when you go to the calculator the way just now we have seen in the beginning you will see that this value as from the calculator z as 1 plus minus of 2y all right and you can see here again the roots are in pair and they are conjugate to each other so therefore answer for this question is g equals to plus minus of 3i you can write plus 3i minus 3i like this or together it doesn't matter and this is 1 plus minus of 2i and these are the answers if you like you can have a look from beginning to now okay okay guys lastly we see one more example uh, that relates uh, the cube roots and the fourth root um, of the given polynomials right so here in this case uh, let's see that is uh, given that zq minus 12 z square plus pz plus uh, q equals to 0 and where p and q are real constants means p and q are not the complex numbers okay and given that z equal to 2 plus i is a root of this equation that means then you have to write down another root so definitely you know that for a given polynomial if one root is 2 plus i and this is complex roots and you know that the complex roots they are in pair and they are conjugate to each other so definitely your another root is going to be 2 minus i okay so this is the answer for part a of this question now let's see in question number b it said that to find the value of p that means values of p and q okay so here in this case uh, you found that given that g equals to 2 plus i is uh, one of the root that means 2 minus i is another root it means z equals to 2 minus 1 satisfy this equation so therefore what you can write here in place of z you can write here 2 minus 1 this is cube you can see it is and this is 12 and then this is again 2 minus 1 and then this is a square so it is p times of g and g in place of g we can write here 2 minus 1 2 minus i and then there is q and then this is 0 now go to the detail simplification of this sort of thing so here in this case you have a minus b formula form of algebra so it is a q in place of a there is 2 in place of b there is i so this is a q minus 3 a square b plus 3a 3a b square and plus bq so for this we could write up to here so let's close this by a bracket and then this is minus it is 12 you can see here and g square 2 minus i square that means it is a minus b whole square form so it is b i plus q equals to 0 now collect all real terms together and the imaginary terms together in that case what you will see that when you go to the further simplification so no it is 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 only yes so in this way we can if you go like this you will find that 34 plus 2p plus q in the real part and then it is 37 minus p i equals to 0 in the imaginary part but here what you can do actually that you know that 0 can also be written as 0 plus 0 i in the form of complex number okay so what we have here in this case is that minus 34 plus 2 p plus q plus 37 minus p i 37 minus p i equals to 0 plus 
zero i now we can equate okay so equating real and imaginary terms or we can say that imaginary parts all right then what we have actually in the real part you can see here that 34 plus 2p plus q equals to 0 you can say this as equation 1 and also you can see here in the imaginary part from the both sides 37 minus p 37 minus p towards the right yes 37 minus p and then this is going to be 0 i that means in place of real number there is 0 so that is going to be 0 you can say this is 2 and uh, from 2 easily we saw uh, we see that uh, p equals to if you transpose to the other side then p is going to be 37 and uh, therefore uh, minus 34 plus 2 times of put back the value of 37 and then this is cube equals to 0 uh, so we have used equation 1 in this case and the value of p and if you go to the calculator you will see that uh, the value of q as minus 40 okay so therefore you can see that p value as here this is 37 and q value as here it is minus 40 and this way we got the values of p and q in this example so let's have a look properly from beginning to now If you need more time, you can pause here and then have a proper look. All right. In the same example, if it will ask you to reprint the given roots on same, you can say this is on same argon diagrams. Then what you can do that your one root is given as you can call as g1 or just g no problem so g1 as 2 plus i and you found another root g2 as 2 minus i so in the vector form how you can you could see uh, you could see here that is that the x component is 2 the y component is 1 and here the x component is 2 and y component is mo negative 1 now go to the rectangular axis of complex numbers this is 0 we can say this is real z and along y axis it is imaginary z okay and then first it is 2 and 1 so must be 2 somewhere here and 1 is somewhere here you can uh, mark yourself and then it is this sort of coordinate is going to be 2 1 so for example if 1 is here okay so this is 0 1 so your one complex number is like this so you call this as g1 and another complex number you can see that 2 minus 1 that means uh, x is still positive but y is negative in this case because these two are conjugate to each other so it is for example negative 1 is here then your another complex number point is going to be here it is uh, 2 and minus 1 that is negative 1 so your second complex number will be like this and this is z2 okay now tell me one more thing is that uh, we have this polynomial uh, given in terms of cubic equation so we already have the two values of its roots which are 2 plus i and 2 minus i what do you think of the third root will you try better you try to find the third root of this once you found this third root uh, can you see or before doing so can you just guess whether you get the third root is a real number or a complex in both cases you try to represent that number on this complex plane okay so you know that even real number like three for example can be plotted on the complex plane because even if this is real it can be represented in terms of complex number like 3 plus 0 i so this is an exercise work for you all okay guys 
let's now discuss about how to find square roots of given complex numbers so here uh, we are interested to find a square root of g as like this so g equal to given as e to the power pi by 4 i then this in the trigonometrical form and then this is in the cartesian form so let's take z equals to 1 by root 2 plus under root 2 i in the cartesian form so if you get the answer you know that from your our previous class that if you like you can convert that into the trigonometrical form and also in the euler's form your answer okay so at this time i am going to just explain about the square root of this sort of complex numbers so here what you can uh, say that let x plus i y okay is a square root of z all right therefore what you can see here is that a square root of z equals to in fact a square root of 1 by under root 2 plus 1 by under root 2i okay and this sort of thing we have just supposed as this is x plus i y equals to under root of 1 by root 2 because here pi by 4 was 45 degree and for cos 45 degree is 1 by root 2 and similarly the sine 45 degree is 1 by root 2 so plus this is 1 by root 2 i okay and then we proceed after this step in order to find the value of the square root of z that means if you get the value of x and value of y and if you put back the value of x and y and then you will have a complex number in the form of value of x and value, values of y and those complex numbers will be the square root of so we are interested to find the square root of uh, this complex number so here we supposed a square root of the given complex number z is x plus i y so in this case we square both sides that means by squaring both sides you will have this is x plus i y square equals to square of under the root of half plus 1 by 2 under root 2 and then this is i and this is a square now expand it it's like a plus b whole square so this is a square plus 2 a b in place of b there is i y and then plus b a square so in place of b is again i y so a square is a square and the square root and the square root and the square they will cancel each other so you are remained with it is 1 by 2 plus 1, 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 i okay now let's go further it is uh, x square plus 2 x y i and here i square so you know that the i square is negative 1 so plus time minus is here minus so you'll get this as y square and now this is 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 i and then you collect all real and uh, imaginary terms together so here in this case you'll see that this is x square minus y square both are real and make sure that even though uh, x and y they are with uh, the imaginary terms also but x and y themselves are real numbers so it is x square minus y square these are the real terms only here and then it is 2xy and i this is the imaginary term and here in the another side it is 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2 i and now this is possible that to equate the real and imaginary terms so therefore you can write here that equating real and imaginary terms from both the sides then you will have one equation as x square minus y square equals to in the right side the real term is here 1 by under root 2 you call this as equation 1 and the compare imaginary term so this is 2xy from the left side it is 2xy and to the right side the coefficient of i is here 1 by root 2 that means y equals to in fact it is 1 by take the if you cross multiply it will go to the denominator so after that you will see that this is 2 root 2 and x 
x is not inside the root you can call this as equation 2 so therefore from equations 1 and 2 just replace back 2 in 1 then you will see that x square minus y square in place of y we have 1 by 2 root 2 and then it is x and then a square equals to 1 by root 2 and now it is uh, yes it is x square minus now if you square this is going to be 2 square is 4 and a square of root 2 is 2 so 4 times 2 is 8x square okay equals to 1 by root 2 now just simplify it then if you take the LCM you will have it as uh, 8x square as the LCM and then 8 times 8x square times this is 8x4 and you are here you have only 1 and then equals to 1 by root 2 again cross multiply this so that you will get that root 2 times of 8 and then this is x to the power 4 you can write it is x square whole square or you can just leave it like that this way and uh, if you multiply by root 2 over here cross multiply then you are going to have here root 2 and equals to it goes to another side then it will be 8 x square you might have understood that why I have taken x in place of x4 as x square 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 of x square so it is now under root or you can write 8 root 2 x square whole square and if you transpose to the left it's going to be 8 x square and minus we already have this minus root 2 equals to 0 and let's see here that in this case if you apply the quadratic equation formula in order to find the value of x square because this is uh, a polynomial of degree 4 but we have result that into a quadratic equation but this value you can see that 8 under root 2 although these are exact value but these are very complicated and it requires a lot of time to calculate so good idea is that go to the calculator again and in the calculator uh, you can just enter the coefficient of x square so suppose here x square as a single variable so this is the square of that variable so it's in the form of quadratic equation so the first value is 8 root 2 enter the second value is negative 8 enter and the last value is negative under root 2 enter and uh, I found one value as one value of x square I will say in this case not the x as 2 plus under root 2 by 4 and another value I can see that minus 2 plus under root of 2 divided by 4 so here in these two values what happens if you take the x only then another side you have to take the square root of this value 2 plus under root 2 by 4 and also here it is minus so you can take under root of you take minus common it's going to be 2 minus under root 2 by 4 so if you analyze these two values of x in this case then what you can see is that this value is purely real so this is possible to find the the real square root of this value but here in this case because of this negative sign so this is the root of the negative number and also you can see that this is 2 is bigger than under root 2 so definitely 2 minus 2 is going to be positive and positive times positive by positive is positive and positive times negative is negative so this is the square root of the negative number which is not real but this is given that as per we have supposed as x and y are the real numbers therefore we neglect this value of x so therefore we keep the value of x as under the root of 2 plus under root 2 by 4 so here as x is real number 
we have neglected this uh, imaginary number value or value therefore the value of x at this point is now it is x equals to plus minus under the root 2 plus root 2 by 4 so whole root is here now you if you again go to the calculator you will see that this is a square root okay you will see that this value as plus minus 0 0.924 and from which equation you can see that now from either from 1 or 2 so let's take 2 so therefore from 2 you can see here from 2 it is y equals to 1 by y equals to 1 by 2 root 2 and then this is x all right and now replace this value of x in this equation so it is uh, 1 by 2 root 2 times this value of x as plus minus of 0 0.924 and again go to the calculator so once you go to the calculator you will see that the value of y in this case is 3 8 3 so now what we have actually that here you see the x plus i y as the square root of this so therefore therefore what we have actually uh, a square root of z in fact is here 1 by root 2 under the root plus 1 by root 2 i and that is equal to x plus i y as root then you can see that the possible values of x here in this case are there are two values of x and the two values of y s also will have so we can put these values over here then x value is you can write here plus minus the real that is in the real part only so 9 to 4 and then it is plus minus y value as plus minus 0 0.383 and then i so both x and y are real but x is in the real part and y is in the imaginary part so uh, we have the square roots of this complex number where z was 1 by under root 2 plus 1 by under root 2 i are 0 0.924 plus 0 0.383 i and another is uh, yes another is minus you can write 0 0.924 minus this is 0 0.383 i so these two are the square roots for this can you think of any other also because these these are the number so you can take their uh, conjugate also as a square root value so here we can see that conjugate of this is 0 0.924 plus then we write minus this is 0 0.383 i and conjugate of another number is minus 0 0.924 as this is minus so you can write here plus 0 0.383 i and these are all answers all right now let's check whether or not the answer we got are correct in this case so what you can do in this case is that for example if i am taking to check one of the root one of the square of this root whether that is going to be equal to okay once you square it, it should be equal to one by root two and this that means x plus i y square should be equal to one by root two plus one by root two i so let's take here that here i'm taking one of it as yes 0 0.924 and plus 0 0.383 i square and if you expand it it's like a square plus 2ab plus b square form 
so it is 9.24 0 0.924 square a square plus 2 a means 924 and b means 382 a b yes 383 and we have i also here and plus b square means it is 0 0.383 i square and once you go to the calculator or otherwise or in the way you find it is easy to you once you square it you will see that this value as 854 and then plus it is 0 0.708 i and minus it is 0 0.147 and finally you will see that these two are cancelled out so this is going to be 0 0.707 and uh, then you are remained with it is 0 0.708 i okay now can you check in your calculator what is the value of 1 by root 2 if you go to the calculator and check it so just simply you check that value in your calculator 1 divided by root 2 and you will see this value is in the SD mode is 707 okay up to 3 significant decimals so this is going to be uh, 0.707 so let's compare with that so this is in fact 1 by root 2 and plus this is again 1 by root 2 i although there is 0 0.07 but this is at the third significant decimal you can see there is little different and that might be due to somewhere round off of these values so what we found actually that as this sort of thing is the square root of this number then if you square that value that must be the given number of which we found the square root of and we verified that our answer is correct and you can do the similar work in order to build up your uh, confidence even better by testing other square roots of the given complex number 1 by root 2 plus 1 by root 2i so that in every time uh, you'll see that when you square this complex number your resulting number will be z equals to 1 by under root 2 plus 1 by uh, under root 2 if you like you may pause here and have a proper look again and again and this is another page 2 for this square root and lastly we have this page So I produced these three pages in order so that you can have chance to see from beginning to end for this sort of method of finding square roots of complex numbers. Okay guys, uh, this is all for now. So in the next class, that is uh, in the fourth part of uh, this complex number class, uh, we'll discuss about uh, Loki, that is locus, plural, uh, Loki means the plural form of locus. And uh, in Loki, we'll work through circles with centers at origin, uh, as well as at uh, other coordinate points. Uh, in general, we can say the point A, B, for example, so uh, this is all for today and uh, thank you for attending this class so wait for the next class that will be the conclusive class for this complex numbers